Hello! Today I will be sharing my favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe. Now, we will begin with one cup of butter. But unlike typical chocolate chip cookies, we are actually going to melt and brown our butter before adding it to the dough. Browning butter is the process where you melt your butter at a very high heat, allowing the water to evaporate and the milk solid settle to the bottom to toast. This gives the butter a nutty and rich flavor. Once your butter has fully melted, you'll see that it begins to foam a bit. Be careful not to let it boil over, just keep stirring it. But you can see here that very quickly, the color of the butter changes. And that is where you can see that the milk solids have been toasted, imparting their flavor into the rest of the butter. As soon as your butter has browned, immediately remove it from the heat to stop it from cooking any further, and then just pour it into a measuring cup or a container, one that will not crack from the heat so that we can uh, cool down the butter. Since we did boil off so much liquid in the process, we're going to reconstitute the butter with about two tablespoons of water. You just want to mix it in well in order to incorporate it back into the butter. Then just pop this into the fridge for about 15 minutes to make sure that it will not cook our sugar when we add it into the cookies. Now onto dry ingredients, add one and three quarters cup of flour into a separate bowl with one and a half teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of baking soda. Just whisk that together and set it aside for later. Now for the wet ingredients, we are going to start out with one cup of dark brown sugar. Now the difference between this and light brown sugar is just that it has more molasses and will make the cookies a little bit chewier in the end. Then add one half cup of white sugar. If we did just white sugar, that would make the cookies brittle because the white sugar just caramelizes when it is baked. Then add in one teaspoon of espresso powder. This just helps complement the chocolate as well as two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Now we are going to add in our cooled brown butter and you just want to give it a stir because after sitting in the fridge for 10 to 15 minutes, the milk solids will have all settled to the bottom. So I just give it a stir and then add it in and then we are going to mix it all together. I use my electric mixer, but you can definitely do this by hand, uh, whichever is easier for you. You just want to start out slowly since the butter can get everywhere, and it'll slowly incorporate until it gets to be light and fluffy. Once you see that your sugar and butter have combined well and become a little bit lighter in color, we are ready to mix in the eggs. Now for this recipe, I put in one whole egg and then one egg yolk. This is especially important in this recipe. Egg yolks actually help emulsify fat and solids. And since we have this melted butter that is combining with the solid sugar, we want something that really helps make them come together into one cohesive mixture. So instead of adding two whole eggs, adding just that additional yolk instead helps achieve that. Now we are ready to add in our dry ingredients. I did this in three additions mixing well in between. Since they're cookies, their texture is more forgiving than a cake. Um, it's a little bit harder to overmix them, but I always do the last addition 
just by stirring it in with a spatula. Um, I start off with the mixer and then I finish it off just getting all of those extra little bits of flour with a spatula. Now onto the best part, the chocolate. So I add about four ounces of roughly chopped dark chocolate. Uh, mine is the Trader Joe's 85% chocolate bar. We are just going to finish it off with three additional ounces of chocolate chips, which is about one half cup. Then just gently fold the chocolate chunks and chocolate chips into your cookie dough. You want to make sure that it is evenly incorporated throughout. Now we will scoop our cookies onto a tray. I use a silicone mat to ensure that my cookies don't stick. but can also use parchment paper and I use an ice cream scoop to make sure that all of my cookies are roughly the same size and these do spread out quite a bit so you want to keep them at least three inches apart. For baking put the cookies into an oven at 350 degrees for about 14 minutes. Now since these cookies are so delicious I prefer to have them when they're fresh. So what I actually do is I make three or six when I make the dough fresh, but with the rest of them, I scoop them onto a tray, I pop them into the freezer for a couple of hours, and then I store them in a freezer bag. That way you can have freshly baked cookies anytime you would like. Once out of the oven, we just need to add one final finishing touch, a little sprinkle of salt. This just ties all of our flavors together. And there you are. You have just made a twist on a simple chocolate chip cookie that is not too complicated to master, but really brings up the whole flavor profile a level. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed.